Okay. Good evening and welcome to the Private Property Podcast. I'm your guest host, SD Klassen, filling in for Zama Kumano. Tonight, we're speaking about everything prop tech. Yes, I asked myself the same question. What is that? It's property and technology, basically the amalgamation of both of them put together, also known as real estate technology. So please sit back as we welcome Brian Sango. Hi, Brian. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? I can't complain. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to jump straight into it, Brian, because we yeah. do have a competition uh, for the viewers. As you know, we have a competition this evening, so please stay tuned till the end of the show as we will announce the winners of that competition. So, Brian, thank you again for joining us. I'd like uh, just a quick introduction. Who, are, who is Brian Sango? Okay, no, thank you. Um, yeah, so my name is Brian Sango. Um, your property guy. Uh, um, they normally refer to me as that. Um, bro, I've been in the property space for about 10 years now. Um, selling properties is how I started. And from there on, I just transitioned into my strong passion for, for doing things better, for certain softwares that just made um, the job easier. And that's how I found myself really in the prop tech space uh, with a company called Property Inspect. And what Property Inspect is, it's a cloud-based inspection software that our clients use to carry out various type of inspections. I mean, not just rental inspections, it stretches to specialized inspections like your bank valuation inspections, property rating inspections as well. And so we've got a, uh, a platform that our clients use globally. Okay, amazing. So basically the guy we should be talking to because you are the property guy and we're all trying to be property moguls in this industry, um, yeah. which leads me to our next question is, what exactly is PropTech? Okay, so prop, prop tech, to be honestly, uh, I mean, to be honest, is just a combination of two words, property and technology. So to simplify it, it's um, how technology plays out within the property space. And then that's how the phrase prop tech came about. So you've got fintech, you've got prop tech, and yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was about to ask the different types of kind of prop tech. Yeah. What are those? Uh, oh, so the different types of prop tech, well, you can basically... It, you can form subsectors within the prop tech space depending on what sort of area of the real estate world they play in. So you could have prop tech mainly centered in commercial property, prop tech mainly focused on residential property, or as far as just like I said, property inspect, we focus mainly on the inspection side of things. And then there are other subsectors like property management, rental management, you name it. So it's just okay, any technological okay. tool that can streamline, automate, or just quicken any process within the property space. Right, so I was just about to ask if you could maybe elaborate on how like certain property entrepreneurs who would like to be the next property guy or property girl out there, how they can maybe use this platform. Um, how can we use it becoming or go, journeying into becoming property moguls? Uh, you mean prop tech as a whole, how to just use yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. So, I mean, as an entrepreneur within the property space, it's all about uh, understanding firstly what it is that you're doing or where you want to plug yourself in. I mean, you could come in as a property entrepreneur and either want to be a service provider to people within the property space. You could say, well, you're coming into the property space as an entrepreneur, as someone who wants to buy and hold property. So maybe you want to be a landlord and you want to build a portfolio and rent it out for, for passive income generation purposes, et cetera, et cetera. Or you could come into the property space itself and want to be a practitioner. So you want to sell properties or you want to rent out properties on behalf of other people. So that's where it really starts is identifying where exactly you want to plug yourself in. And then once you're there, you, you find out exactly why you're doing what you're doing and what problems certain people within that space normally face. And then you align yourself with the right prop tech tools to address whatever teething um, issues you face. So, for example, um, someone who's renting out right. properties, someone renting out properties as a landlord, yes, could, maybe want, could maybe want to make use of a prop tech uh, software for rental collection or just to streamline communication between him and his tenants, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so amazing. So I think really knowing exactly how you want to use this tool will help you actually figure out how to use the tool. In essence. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, perfect. So then, I, again, to my next question is, then what are some of the advantages of using this tool? Let's say I'm a landlord and I'd like to use uh, this technology, property technology. Um, not only because you've explained how I could use it, but then what are the advantages of using this instead of just being your, the landlord that we know, you know, the, the common landlord that we know that, that knows absolutely nothing about prop tech? Yeah. So um, I think to, to start answering that question, what I'll highlight is that prop tech is actually comes in as a solution. So the advantages of any solution is it's really going to give you peace of mind, one. Uh, it's, it's just going to make it less of a hassle. Uh, you know, we all want something that's a little less tedious. So perhaps you do away with paperwork. Everything is now automated. And um, the paperwork that normally came with it in the Excel spreadsheets needs someone to be very admin savvy, of which not a lot of people are. But now with prop tech, you can bypass having to to know how to handle your Excel spreadsheets and everything because you've got certain systems in place that are making it easier. So it saves you on time. Uh, and by saving you on time, it gives you more time to build onto your business or to focus on other business activities that you partake in. And in essence, it saves you money by doing that as well. Exactly. And I'm sure it actually saved a lot of people, a lot of admin, especially during the pandemic. And how yeah. well did it actually work during COVID-19? Do you maybe have an example of certain people that used it and how well, how beneficial was it to them during the pandemic? Um, definitely. So I think the pandemic worked very well for us in just opening up our eyes to, to doing things differently. Uh, I'll speak for, for our company as well, for Property Inspect. Before we went into 2020 and COVID-19, we, we did experience a bit of um, sort of resistance, both locally and globally, because we handle client acquisitions all over the world. So like in America, UAE and everything. And there was always a brick wall in terms of uh, breaking into certain areas because people didn't want to reinvent the wheel and do things differently. But now we've got to a point where we needed to just explore other ways of doing what we're doing before. And it's almost yeah. like they had, they had no choice. They but had no choice. Exactly. So now remote, uh, remote the Zoom meetings became became a thing. It became the norm. Um, so many people insisted on doing things, you know, uh, physically. Now said, okay, we can take it virtually. And by taking things virtually, they also realized because for for quite some time we didn't know how long we we're going to have to do things the way we're doing it. But we obviously did not want to explore the idea of our businesses coming to an absolute standstill. So we started exploring ways that we can. Uh, oversee a teammate's progress while he's sitting in his house and I'm sitting in mine. And that pushes you to look at certain CRMs and so forth. And also... When you do looking at various tools. So people now um, absorbed, you know, property management, management tools that they could use. They absorbed uh, certain prop tech tools that they could use to communicate with their team without necessarily having to pick up the phone every now and again. And we just really saw a lot of interest now coming from all, all kinds of people because people just wanted to see, okay, so there, there are thousands of prop tech, well, not literally thousands, but there are a number of prop tech tools out there, but which one of these will really gel with my current business model? Because it's not every tool that will apply to you. There are certain tools that will work for whatever it is that you do. Right. And then do you, at, I mean, at your specific company, advise us on which tools could work for what we're willing to do or want to do? Um, yeah, I mean... I'll, I'll always be open to do that whenever someone says, well, Brian, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a facilities management tool to handle um, our, our facilities management or things that we, we do, uh, hand back inspections and hand over inspections. What can we do in that case? Or uh, the other day I had a client who said, Brian, you know, I'm just struggling to, to manage my own properties um, by myself. Who do you recommend? And I also told them, well, there's, there's, a, there's a prop tech um, company out there called House Me that could, you know, really aid you with what you're trying to do and so forth. So it's, it's really all about uh, opening up people's eyes for them to see what options are out there so that they can look at various demos and, and see what, what really works for them. 
Right. And I think in this kind of new world era that we're going in, we all know that globalization is inevitable and that technology is really the kind of the way that we need to go, whatever the case may be. And you've yeah. spoke about, spoken about really how, it, how this platform can benefit anyone out there who's willing to use it. But then are there some disadvantages of this platform, of property technology in general, I guess? Um... I think there are definitely lots of advantages and disadvantages. It's, it's just a matter of us finally saying we want to embrace it, you know, and, and also embracing the fact that the human aspect will, will never be completely eliminated because I, I think the fear of adopting prop tech by a number of people was because they thought it was going to replace our roles within the property sector. And in essence, it actually doesn't. It's just really there to solve certain problems that you may be facing in whatever it is that you're doing uh, in order to help you build on your business. So it's what, let's not look at PropTech as an enemy, but instead as some form of armor that we can just put on and, and do what we need to do within the property space. Right, because I'm sure a lot of people in the property field feel like this could be their replacement. Yeah, you know, absolutely. and even during during COVID, a lot of people have maybe lost jobs or or something along those lines. But then when they see prop tech, it's another kind of um, speed hump that they hit, and they're like, "Oh, I could also lose my job because of yeah. this platform." And yeah. you're saying that's not entirely true. No, that's not entirely true. I mean, if if I look at it as well from an entrepreneurial perspective. Uh, a prop tech really positions you in a way where you can scale up your business relatively quickly in terms of your your presence and, and your market chain, regardless of what you exactly do within the property space, because you can really position yourself well without having to have a huge team or huge offices and everything. You can really work from home, but uh, have certain systems in place that will make you still compete with other companies that have been standing for years on end. So it, it helps you fast track your growth as an entrepreneur because it, it just really gives you that, that brand identity that people can resonate with. Right. And I think just before we go to a break, and I just want to apologize to some of the viewers, we have had some technical difficulties, but we're, we're, we're back on track. Do you think that there are any downsides to property being digitized or property going technologically, basically? Um, again, no. I think it, it really worked well for us. It, uh, I mean, for example, if you take the virtual tours that have been, I think, one of the biggest things that blew up this year, they've worked pretty well. As an investor, you can make a sound decision, seated wherever you are uh, on whether you want to take up a property somewhere else, which means you save on time, but you still have certain tools in place that allow you to make an educated decision as to what offer to put down on that particular property um, and whether you at all want to take up that property. So I think uh, going digital really just helped a number of, of things within the space, yeah. Right, and I think there's so many um, uh, platforms that have used this kind of, and like you even said, uh, House Me is one of them. And I'm sure there's so many other um, platforms. I mean, the one that we're on right now is, is using PropTech um, perfectly so and we're doing virtual tours etc so yeah. i just want to quickly say yeah we're just going to quickly run to an ad break so please sit tight brian um let, please don't forget to the viewers please comment and ask any questions for brian before he leaves this evening and we are running that competition which is the cash reward of 500 and cash so sit back sit tight and see you soon
Welcome back. I'm your guest host, SD Carson, and we're back with Brian Sango talking everything property technology. And please don't forget, we have that competition this evening, so stay tuned when we announce our winners. Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for coming back. So I'd like us to maybe elaborate on some prop tech, the various prop tech um, platforms out there. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've we've got we've got quite a number of, of uh, platforms out there that have been doing exceptionally well. You know, really, really helping with with tons of problems that we were facing in the industry. Uh, I mean, private property is probably a, a good example of a prop tech tool and how it helps because it's just the marketplace for for property. Anyone that's looking to rent or buy property will go onto your portal to, to look for property opportunities. Um, we've got, maybe I'll just touch on a few other examples out there and in which area they really play a part in. We've got uh, your property management tools out there. I think one that I can mention is We Connect You. And We Connect You is a company who, whose platform just streamlines and aids um, property owners in managing their properties. So you've got various aspects of, of rental collection or of the admin associated with maybe um, tenant applications on how to track this and that. And all of that is, is something that they manage on their tool. Um, we've got property inspect, like I mentioned earlier on, that all we are is a mobile way uh, of conducting property inspections through our mobile app. So forget the pen and paper that anyone would use for a move in or move out inspection or any bank uh, valuator would use. Now everyone is using that on a mobile app that allows for electro elect uh, electronic signatures and automated distribution of reports and so forth. Um, you've, got, you've got another great company out there, Digs Connect, which is pretty much like your gum tree of student accommodation only. They've been doing exceptionally well as well. I think they just released their, their app a few days ago, if I'm not mistaken. So, so, I mean, the list is endless, to be honest. Uh, you've got basically, oh, you've got Dipify. Dipify is a, a depositless way of renting properties. Yes, I, I didn't know you could rent a property without paying deposit, but there's a new startup right. called Dipify that that just also hit the market and i think they'll do exceptionally well um and then yeah so you've got just it you've got various companies that are identifying certain elements that they feel could be either smoothened or just made a little has a little less hassle um you know and and all they do is they come in and they address a problem now when you any solution that you have as long as you've identified a problem then you will certainly have a marketplace for that. I mean, look at Airbnb, for example. They just came in and created a platform that does work and it works for all of us because now it just makes booking short-term accommodation much, much easier. Exactly. And do you have, um, so looking at all these platforms that use property technology um, to make it easier, to make life simpler for, yeah. for us, are there any tips maybe that you can offer to new property entrepreneurs on how best to take advantage of property technology okay um i think one thing i would i would definitely put out there for anyone that's looking to come in as an entrepreneur either using uh prop tech or who maybe has identified a gap and wants to come in and introduce a new prop tech tool it's just um it's the power of integration i think we find ourselves now where you know we could have tons and tons of prop tech tools out there, but if they cannot coexist and work together from an integration perspective, then that could be limiting. So if you have a property management tool and a property inspection tool or a property rating tool, and these can integrate quite easily, it just means that you don't have to uh, put in data into all those tools. If, if you're already on one platform, then all the necessary information will automatically populate on the other platform. Because remember, PropTech is really supposed to save us time. So now if I'm using 10 different PropTech tools that cannot integrate, then I'm really repeating a process that could have been done away if those tools could have integrated. So yeah, anyone coming into the space, if you are looking at using different tools, just always ask the question, does your system fully integrate with other systems? And if you're coming in with a system of your own that you want to inter I mean, that you want to create, then perhaps also looking at um, or chatting to your tech team to make sure that they keep it integratable, if that's a term, then that'll work well. Because 
your users will always want to know, oh, can I easily integrate, you know? When I sign yeah. up for Superbalist, um, I don't have to create an account because it'll ask me to sign in with Facebook. And I'm so happy because at the click of a button, I've done what could have, you know, taken up some of my time. Exactly. In essence, everything, we just need things to be made easier for us. Yeah. And I think yeah. looking at property, everyone thinks that it's so difficult, but yet there are all these um, different apps or different technologies, which is obviously amalgamating with some property is making it so much easier for us. And yeah. I think because you've advised um, new property entrepreneurs, how, or some tips that they could use, what about those who have been using it? Um, and maybe they're not using it the correct way. Maybe you have some tips for some property moguls out there who have been using property technology, but just maybe how to better their current journey. Um, I think it's always just about looking out there and seeing what, what else is hitting the market, what improvements are being made on various portals. Um, yeah, let's, let's, let's remain innovative. Let's, let's not be afraid to... Uh, you know, better whatever it is that we're doing. So ask all the right questions. When your business, when your internal business processes are changing, because businesses constantly evolve, maybe keep in constant communication with whatever prop tech uh, service provider you're making use of to say, how, how does this affect my current system now, my current workflow now, if I'm to now bring in a new team or if I'm to now bring in a new element to my own business, how will the, the service provider be able to, to cope with that? So yeah, keep, keep the dialogue going, keep all the questions going as well. And like I said, keep an eye on the market to see what, what other what other companies are doing or what other products are being uh, introduced. And I think also because we find ourselves in South Africa, which is a bit of a third world country, we, I always say we are in a position where we can actually refer to what first world countries are, are going through, what trends are, are going through there, because maybe that could give us a bit of a futuristic approach to say, perhaps this is a route that South Africa is likely to follow. And before we even encounter certain problems, we might already uh, be able to put a defense mechanism to avoid certain issues. So that's pretty cool. It's all about just keeping an eye on what's out there and um, also keeping mind of what challenges are unique to us as South Africans. I think a number of people adopt prop tech tools from other countries that don't necessarily gel with South Africa because we've got challenges that are particularly South African challenges. Right, and I was about to ask you, this was going to be my last question, is bringing it back home to South Africa, how is property technology actually being used in South Africa? Because um, I see that we obviously like to look to the US and different countries around the world because technology is obviously booming in your China and your US. But how, how are we actually benefiting, or not even benefiting, how are we using it to the best of our ability as South Africans within South Africa? Yeah, um, so no, definitely, I mean, so with, even with our product, what we, one thing we did when we brought it here was ensure that uh, our app could still work while offline because we did know that certain areas have connectivity issues or, or data could be a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen, if you're on Twitter, a number of people are always crying uh, about how, how, how much it costs to have data and airtime and everything. So it, it's definitely all we need to do, like I said, is to remember what our challenges are and ensure that whatever tools we adopt within um, South Africa actually address whatever challenges we face here. So like connectivity, can you use it uh, in various areas? Uh, is it available to download on, on Google Play stores and will it work well on, on an Apple phone? You know, all those are the type of questions that one should always ask about certain systems that um, are coming from, from other countries how the billing works and how, you know, how, whether it's, it's um, EFTs are allowed or you have to input your card details and, and, and. Right. And I think um, I, just before we close off, I want us to talk more about when you introduce yourself, you told us where you work, what you do, maybe about specifically your tool. You know, you spoke about inspection and doing inspections in houses and how that can benefit us because it saves time and it's easier to do it from, being at home, etc. So, how exactly can your how exactly does your tool work? You spoke about saving data, and that is a big issue. Um, and the fact that we can do it offline is absolutely amazing. So, what would I do if I had gone if I go into a home and I'm using your tool? 
how do, how do I how do I go about that? Okay. So yeah, property inspect is fully customizable. Um, so any any checklists or templates that various people work off, we're able to create that into the system for you. Now, when you walk into when you walk into a property, you can literally uh, be able to to start your inspection, take countless photos, take videos of certain spaces within the property. You've got push buttons that make it very very easy for you to to. Uh, you know, sort of tabulate whatever information you need to record. Um, and it, it allows for signatures, like I mentioned earlier on. And um, at the click of a button, the complete report is then sent out to all your intended recipients before you've even as much as left the property. So you, you save all that time where you still, you'd have to get back to the office and then compile a report and so forth. But this is already automatically drawn up and all the information is plugged onto the report that's sent out um, to your clients. Right, so collecting data on the go. And I think I saw I, I saw some of your platform earlier. You can even do the voiceovers. Uh, yeah. Instead of typing, you can actually use your voice and say, okay, no, there's a damage in the roof or something like that, just to record. Yeah. So you can use the our voice to text functionality. You just speak into your phone and it's typing that into wording for you. You can capture action items like um, needs maintenance, needs cleaning, and you'd be able to pull that directly onto a maintenance ticketing system or a tenant issue reporting system as well. So that works very well for anyone that wants to sort of track all the maintenance issues that need to be carried out in a property. Um, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was about to say, so anyone can use this platform from your landlord to um, those who are even renting. And I think it's nice to, to keep to keep track of things that are going wrong. Because property, yes, um, things go wrong on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, a leak in the roof or whatever the case may be. Yeah, no, definitely. And one thing I've been noticing that's uh, becoming fast the norm in South Africa, which had already happened in other countries, is the, the inspection sector is becoming an, its own standalone um, sort of, you know, market. You, you have a number of like your normal move-in, move-out inspections rental or residential real estate agents have up until a certain point been doing that themselves but we're seeing much more growth now in them wanting to outsource that to uh, a third party that purely comes in to carry out the inspection on behalf of these uh, real estate companies so the advantage of that as well is it's job creation it's going to see a number of people uh, because the home inspection exercise is becoming a thing. And the laws as well are pushing us that way, where these inspections need to be handled very well and done thoroughly, but obviously by a third party. And using a prop tech tool only helps you break into the space and grow your entrepreneurial business much easier. Right. And I think um, my last question is using your tool, would it cost me? Uh, yes, so our property inspect works on a monthly subscription basis that's dependent on, you know, your, your usage, your number of properties, as well as how many uh, members of your team will be coming on board and so forth. But yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Brian Sango. It was really nice talking to you. And I hope everyone's taken quite some, some tips about how we can actually become property moguls and use prop tech tools such as property inspect. And um, I also know I've done my own research. The monthly fee isn't too pricey. So getting that tool on your phone is really, it'll benefit you at the end of the day, you know, learning how to save time. And especially in this time, like you said, prop tech blew up and we didn't even know yeah. that it existed. And <laughs> Here we are today, 2020, knowing everything about property technology. Brian, do you have any last words for us? Um, no, I think that's, that's all for me. Thank you so much. And yeah, prop, prop tech is really a great, great uh, thing to have. And it'll make life much, much easier. And like I said earlier on, it's not really an enemy. It's just here to, it's bringing solutions to the table. Right. Thank you so much, Brian. Uh, it's been really lovely having you. Have a good week further. Thank you so much for being our guest this evening. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. As you know, we're still doing our competition this evening, and I have some of the people of the guests on our platform who have reviewed our page and screenshotted their comments. And as you know, the prize is a 500 Rand cash voucher. So what I'll be doing now is reading some of the reviews from some of the winners. I only have two reviews here. 
Uh, it's quite a lengthy review that we have here, so please bear with me. Uh, having been a follower of private property for many years, and them being a part of the journey when I bought my first property and recently sold it. I have seen their evolution. The offering has moved with developments around the world and I am blown away by many of the resources that they have used through their advice center for new existing home buyers as well as investors. It's basically a one-stop shop for all property information, advice and basic services. The latest podcasts are priceless. One would have spent so much money and time just to get the knowledge that they bring to you in the comfort of your homes. The property giant has grown and it is going higher and higher. Halala. So that's the one comment that we got. Thank you so much. I'll announce the winner shortly. And then our second comment is private property. Thank you guys for doing such an amazing job with your podcasts. With the lockdown and social distancing and all our fears and anxiety of leaving home, I feel that the podcasts have done an amazing job in covering the key aspects anyone should and would want to know. And the best part is that this could all be done in the comfort of your home. Kudos to you guys for keeping up with the times and going the technological route. Ample lessons learned through these podcasts, but I think personally, the one that has really helped me was the podcast regarding five things landlords can and cannot do during the lockdown. I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that this has not only affected us personally, but also some close relatives and friends. So apart from gaining a wealth of knowledge myself, I was able to use that and share it with people in my close circles. This lockdown has been difficult on most of us, and a lot of landlords thought that they could take advantage of us in this time. But luckily, your podcast have cleared all of that up for us, and we were better off. So please, the winners this evening are, we have four, four lucky winners who reviewed and sent their, their comments through. It is Este van Aswegen. I'm sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly. Martha Shingange, Jermaine Doravalu, and Mkateko Agape. So what you need to do now going forward is just send us an inbox just to claim your prize. And thank you so much. Again, thank you to Brian Sango for tuning in with us. I hope that you've learned a little bit more about property and technology and that the two of them are actually doing really great together. Thank you so much. See you guys tomorrow evening, same time, same place. Clifton Smithers. I live in Belito, where my partners and I run a business called Union 3. As a family, we chose to move here about six years ago. What attracted us to the area was the safe and relaxed lifestyle of the North Coast. We're surrounded by so much natural beauty, and we love that it's so casual. It's just not as intense as a busy city. In fact, that's one of the main reasons there's so many people moving into the area. There's some amazing lifestyle estates out here. We've got some Bali, Brettonwood Estate, and Zimbiti, to name a few. The Belito Lifestyle Centre caters to everyone's needs. There's also some smaller commercial centres like Tiffany's in Salt Rock. There's some excellent restaurants to choose from, and there's a really wide variety of activities on offer. From mountain biking out on the trails to surfing at any one of the beaches, there really is something for everyone. This quiet little town really comes alive over the weekend. The live concerts in the farmer's market at the Michi Orchard is very popular. With the new international airport just 15 minutes down the road and the unmatched lifestyle that this place offers, it's no wonder that the North Coast 
is the fastest growing town in South Africa. My family and I absolutely love it, Jack. And this is our neighborhood.